Okay, today I'm going to do more of a project based video, so uh, do a bit of uh, um, CAD and CAM uh, and then some machining at the end of it. Uh, it's for a, uh, a part that I need that I can't actually buy, so um, I'll just introduce what it is and um, we'll take it from there, okay? Um, quite a while ago I figured out that I really wanted a dovetail fixture for my fourth axis. Um, it allows for better access for tooling um, if you're not uh, stuck to using a forge or chuck. Um, and a couple of weeks ago I went on a hunt to see what I could find. Um, and I, I visited the usual suspects, people like uh, Technigrip and uh, Kurt and Raptor Work Holding and it's quite obvious that uh, the products that they sold were, were, were right out of my price range. Um, and uh, I was about to give up and go and try and make my own version. Um, there's a really nice one that's on Tormac's blog that, uh, where someone did a, a replica or a copy of one of the Technigrip ones. Uh, and I was about to do that myself, as I say, um, when I finally came across a company um, called uh, Fifth Axis, these guys. Um, and uh, they make, make some really nice little products and they're very affordable as well. So I thought I'd uh, give this small one a go. It's about an inch and a half by an inch and a half um, square um, and about an inch high. And it will take stock uh, ranging from about an inch wide up to three or four inches in, in width. Um, it generates quite a lot of clamping force here. So this is probably going to be more than uh, good enough for what I need. Um, so the project today is basically make a riser block so I can mount um, this dovetail fixture around about here on my fourth axis. Um, the, the company Fifth Axis do make some of these, but uh, nothing with a compatible uh, bolt, bolt hole pattern for, for a faceplate like this. Um, so just to start with, I need to get some dimensions. Uh, first dimension I'm going to get is um, across the, the outside of these two bolts. So I'll just put a pair of calipers between these two threads, and this will dictate uh, the minimum dimension of the bolt hole pattern. Obviously, I can't slide these in any further. So if I get a minimum dimension, um, that should set my uh, bolt hole pattern. Um, the other dimension I'm going to need is from the face to the underside of the uh, cap head. Uh, and this will then tell me how deep I need to counterbore uh, for mounting it to, to this plate. I'll need to measure the distance uh, across the centre here for location boss. Um, I've already done that on, on other fixtures. I know that's exactly 30 millimetres. Um, so we'll need that figure. And the last thing uh, or dimension I need is the stock that I'm going to use. And um, I've got this block of, uh, of 6061 and it's a uh, uh, five and three eighths inch diameter. So obviously that will dictate the overall size that the uh, riser block needs to be. Okay, I, th I think that's all the dimensions I need. Let's uh, jump into um, CAD and, and see if we can figure some, some more stuff out there. Obviously I need to set the height, but uh, we'll look in uh, CAD um, and chop some models of tooling in and, and see what, 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 what we're going to need in terms of spacing from this surface to the bottom of that uh, dovetail fixture. Okay? Okay, so just before uh, I start drafting this part up, I thought I'd show you um, uh, the catalogue from the company Fifth Axis so you get an idea of what I'm uh, aiming to make. It's this item here on the right, this um, red riser block here. Um, Obviously looking at it, I think the main angle of the slope is probably about 60 degrees and then we've got four cutouts uh, around it that are probably about 45 degrees. Um, the overall dimensions of the fixture, dovetail fixture are down here, it's about one and a half by one and a half and the overall maximum length is, it says two and a quarter here, but I, I, I suspect that um, once you start loosening that up, that'll probably grow to about 2.3 inches. So I'm going to guess that this square uh, area on the top of the fixture to be, or, or, or riser block to be 2.3 inches by 2.3 inches. And that should be a good, good starting point, okay? Um, there's many ways to, uh, to, to create a part like this, but this is the way I, I would choose to do it. Um, first of all, select the front plane, create a new sketch, um, add some construction lines, there, there. Um, and now I'm going to do uh, the cross section of that part, so small flange, an angled section, top square and overall height. Looks good. I might add an overall dimension there. I think I said the stock was uh, five, um, 
5 and 3 eighths, 5.375. And obviously that's only one half turned into a, a, a revolve extrude for this, so that's divided by two. And um, I think I want to machine some uh, aluminum off the outside of the stock, so I'll drop that down to 2.65. Okay. Uh, this dimension here is obviously going to be um, the amount of space we've got on those uh, M10 bolts to, to hold it onto the uh, faceplate, the fourth axis. Um, and I measured it to be about um, 150,000, so 0.15 inches. And then I've got to add a counter bore for the depth of an M10 bolt, so that's plus 10 millimeters. Um, uh, and I'm going to round that up to 0.55 of an inch, I think. Looks good. Uh, this angle in here, I think it was, I, I said it looked like about a 60 degree slope, so I'm going to put that in as uh, 120. And uh, then the uh, size of that square at the top, I think we said it was uh, 2.3 inches, so that's 2.3 divided by 2. Um, okay, almost there. And the overall height, I don't know at the moment, I'm going to have to look in a minute, but um, in a, do some modeling and, and bring some tool holders in and see what works. But I'm going to start with 1.5 inches and see how that looks. Okay. Um, the, oh, the last thing I need to do is obviously create that, the boss on boss feature on the back to align um, in that hole in the fourth axis. So I'll line across here, down here, and back to the origin again. Trim this line out. Um, it doesn't need to be too too long. I think 150 thousandths would probably work fine. And the diameter of it I said was uh, 30 millimeters, so that's uh, 30 millimeters divided by 2. Uh, that looks looks about right. I'll do a revolve boss base and the axis rotation is this line here. Great, that looks, uh, that looks like a good start. Okay, next feature I want to add is the bolt hole pattern. So I'll create a sketch on the back. Uh, add a construction line to start with. Then we'll add a hole, which is going to be 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters. Um, and then I'm going to create a, um, a circle that uh, meets that one there. I'll add the construction. And we're actually going to create a second hole, or a second cir construction circle going to the center. I prefer defining bolt circles as um, to the center of the pattern. Um, and I'll add construction there. OK, uh, now I'll have another dimension to this outer one. As I say, I measured the spacing on, over the outside of the threads and to get me my, that minimum um, bolt hole circle. But as I say, that was over the outside of the threads, and I know that that was four and three quarter inches, so 4.75 inches. Um, and I'm actually going to set that to a driven dimension. That way, I can actually do the real specification from this smaller circle on the inside that uh, will define the bolt pattern. So we're out there, have a look at the size that it comes up with. This is 4.356, so I'm just going to round that up to 4.4 inches. That, that should work fine. Okay, and now I can just do an extrude cut through all, and uh, that's our hole generated. Um, now, before I do repeat this pattern around the this flange, I'm going to create the um, counter ball for it. So let's highlight the surface, create a new sketch. Back to circle and we should be able to snap to the center of that hole. We'll dimension this to be uh, 10 millimeters. Sorry, no, it's not 10 millimeters. It's going to be the size of a, uh, the head of a socket head cap screw for, for M10. I have a feeling that's about 580 or just over 580 thou. So I'm actually going to put that at 0.6 of an inch, I think. Okay. That looks about right, and um, and then you do an extrude cut. Um, that's ten millimeters deep. In general, um, uh, the height of a socket head cap screw is the same as the nominal diameter of the bolt in question, ten millimeters. Uh, oh, that's so close to 
0.4 of an inch, I'll just round that up to 0.4. Okay, so that's our feature. Um, now before I can rotate this um, around, I need a axis. I, I could use the circle, but I tend to like using axes to, um, to define a rotation. Um, so I'm going to create some reference geometry here, uh, an axis on the intersection of two planes. Uh, this way I can then just define uh, the front plane and top plane and uh, that'll give me my axis there. So if I highlight these two features, the hole and the counter bore, and uh, do a circular pattern, <clears throat> it's quite easy to say I want a 90 degree spacing between them, uh, four holes, and the axis of rotation is going to be the axis we've just defined. Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good there. Um, guess the next uh, feature I need to create are those four flat areas that have been trimmed off to allow um, greater access for tooling. So uh, select the front plane, we'll add a sketch, and again I'll start with some construction lines. First one through the origin in the center and the second one we'll put place there for now. Um, and what I'm going to do is make this construction line collinear with the face, uh, just in case I have to alter the height, the overall height of the riser block. That way, that uh, that construction line should move with it. Um, again, another line, um, and uh, I'm just going to draw a triangle from there to the back to there again. I mentioned that I think I said. It looked to be about 45 degrees, so put 45 in there. Um, this dimension here, I'm just going to go with what looks about right. Let's try uh, 0 0.8 of an inch, um, 0.9. Yeah, that looks all right. Uh, I'm not going to bother um, uh, fully defining a sketch. I don't think you need to, um, but I will highlight the triangle and say mirror entities and copy about uh, this construction line here. Uh, exit sketch and then I can do an extrude cut uh, through both. That looks good. Um, and I can just repeat the same <clears throat> same process quickly on the um, on the top plane as well. So the top plane sketch And uh, they are, say last thing, and we'll mirror that again. Mirror, mirror about this line. Extrude cut through all in both directions. Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna have a look to see how that compares to the um, original manufacturer's part. Uh, only difference is I think these small, the space between the flat edges is a little bit smaller though. Let's uh, go back and have a look at this. Yeah, I think it's a bit smaller than that, so I'll add it, edit that dimension that I put in. It's 0 0.9, I'll drop it down to 0 0.85. Okay, that will do this, that dimension as well. Drop that to from 0.9 to 0.85. Okay, yeah, that looks better. Um, now, when I machine this surface here, this is going to be um, sort of 3D surfacing. 
I'm not very experienced at it, so I, I'm interested to see how this turns out. Um, it'll be uh, just as much trial and error for me as, as for you guys as well. Um, but I'm going to be using a 3 8 inch uh, ball end mill, um, so obviously I can't cut a, a sharp transition here. I need to add a, a, a fillet in there. I could add this as a separate fillet feature, but I'm actually going to go back into the, uh, the sketch from the Revolve Boss Base and add it in there, I think. The sketch. Uh, radius and chamfer or radius in there. 0.2 of an inch if it's a 3 8 inch uh, ball end mill, and we'll add that uh, in there. Yeah, that looks alright. Um, I guess one of the last things I need to do is is uh, put the um, dowel and uh, bolt hole position on this top surface to mount the dovetail fixture to this uh, square area here. Um, what I did was I downloaded the model, the 3D model from the manufacturer, um, and all I did was I added um, uh, some reference ge geometry, four points at the center of each of the holes. Um, and that way I can then just um, highlight a, a plane, uh, a top plane, I can measure the distance between the center plane to each of these points, determine uh, the spacing off center, and also obviously from the right plane as well. You can see that this hole down here is dead on the center line. This is obviously off a, off a bit. Um, I'll show you evaluate measure between this line and point one. Um, let's change the units, decimal place for decimal places. So I can see the distance from uh, the center line of the dovetail uh, to the center of this dowel pin hole is uh, yeah, 0.135 of an inch. So I, that's how I uh, got the dimensions. Let's uh, go and add them now, okay. Um, new sketch, and I always start with the construction lines. One there, one there, one here, another one, and then uh, two more that go across the part. Okay, I'm going to start dimensioning these. That works out to be uh, half an inch. And this one's half an inch as well. Two holes here are 0.6 in the center. And this is 0.135 from center. Okay, now I'm going to put these holes in. Um, one, two, three, four. Now the reason I, I um, put these off the uh, center is it's much easier to pull up and then snap and uh, define um, like like that. If you try and place it on there, it doesn't automatically it doesn't always automatically generate the constraints of that intersection. So that's why I do it like that. But it all depends on what CAD package you're using. So. Finish these off. Okay, add some dimensions, uh, the dowels and the dowels are a uh, quarter inch, 0.25, 25, and uh, these ones are quarter 28, so I'll put that as 0.25 as well, 0.25. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to make these two circles uh, for construction only. That way when I do an extrude cut I can extrude them at different depths depending on whether it's a dowel pin or a uh, fixture bolt, okay? So features extrude cut the two dowels, they're point, they're 175 thousandths so I'm going to make the uh, those holes, mounting holes, point two of an inch deep, a little bit deeper than the dowels. And um, I'm actually going to show that sketch now, and I can uh, create a new sketch here, and I should be able to snap to if I can. So, let's that sketch now. Let's try that again. Sketch, new sketch, and uh, show that sketch. Okay, circle. Mm -hmm. 
that's it. And now I can snap to the size. Center, and again snap to the size. As I say, this is just so I can do an extrude of a different depth. Um, which is extrude cut. And we're going to say 0.4 of an inch. I'm not sure, I'll have to have a look and see uh, um, how far out the back of the um, dovetail fixture those uh, mounting bolts stick, but 0.4 will do for now. Okay, so that's about it. I'm going to turn off that sketch now. Uh, turn that off. Yeah, that looks, uh, looks about finished. The last thing I want to do is obviously the, there's some quite sharp edges here that I want to get rid of, so I'm going to add a fillet to these faces as well. Um, so let's do a fillet. Um, point one of an inch looks good. Add it to these four faces and this top face as well. It looks good. Obviously, I don't want the fillets in the um, in these mounting holes, but the rest of it looks good. So all I'll do is I'll drag that fillet above the two lots of holes that I've just made. So drag it up there, and uh, yeah, it's applied the fillet before it's drilled. Put the uh, drills in. So that that looks better. That that looks alright. Um, let's save this. Actually, before I do, I'm going to add some color to it, make it look like the uh, um, make it look like the manufacturer's lab and appearance. Some kind of anodized finish. Let's draw back in anodized. Uh, I'll actually apply to the entire part, and then we can uh, edit that appearance and uh, go to red color. Let's go make it red. Okay, something like that. Save as. I'll just call this riser block. The last thing I did um, was I actually um, got hold of the um, 3D model from Tormac, and um, I'm just going to import this part and just check it all looks good. And that does that. Uh, there's the fourth axis and the head there. Insert component, put the riser block in. Uh, add a couple of mates quickly. Uh, this surface here and mate with this surface here. This face with this face. That looks good. Um, and the last thing I'll do is um, insert the clamp assembly or dovetail assembly. A game which I downloaded from the manufacturer's website. A um, couple of quick mates on that. This dowel pin with this hole, uh, that hole, uh, the other dowel pin, and finally the two faces together. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, I think that's probably probably fine. Um, I think it's probably about the same height. The, sorry, the, the correct height. Uh, one and a half inches looks about right. Um, obviously, the stock is going to be sticking out this front edge. So as long as I can get a tool around the back of it uh, to do a, the back surface of uh, of a part, I'll be happy. Uh, yeah, I think that will that that looks good. Um, okay, uh, so I'll save this and uh, I'll fire up um, some cam software and we'll look at a few of the tool parts for this. Okay? Okay, so I've imported the part into my cam package and um, you can see that I've uh, added an additional feature and that's this hole in the center. That's just a half inch hole. Um, I figured out after I was done uh, that uh, I needed some way to align the front and back faces of this part. Um, the uh, backside operations aren't particularly interesting. There's obviously a contouring uh, up uh, the outside edge um, facing operation for um, this large area here, um, a drill for the center, and then I'm gonna edge break uh, <clears throat> the side here, um, th this edge and uh, the edge in the hole as well. Um, but what I thought I'd do is something slightly different. It's not often you see people integrating boring cycles into uh, CNC. Um, it's not particularly difficult. So what I thought I'd do is um, preset a boring head and then bore this external boss features to exactly 30 millimeters. Um, and when I've uh, done that, 
um, I'll leave the part exactly where it is, I'll uh, take the boring head out, I'll reconfigure it for an internal bore and I'll run it back down through the center again. And that, that way I know that the uh, the hole on the other side that where it pokes out is exactly uh, coaxial with uh, this boss feature on the back. Not not needed, but uh, it's a piece of tooling and fixture and I want to do the best and most accurate job I can on this, okay? Um, okay, if I flip the part over, um, again, there's some pretty standard stuff here. These will be drills, 10 millimeter, um, for the bolts. Um, these will be pocketing. Uh, operations uh, for the counterpoles. Um, these two here I think are the uh, threaded holes to hold the ductile fixture on so that'll be drilled 5.5 millimeter and then tap quarter 28. Uh, these two holes are going to be um, dowel pins I think or may maybe the other way around. Um, I'll uh, double check in a minute and uh, I'm going to use another boring head, but a smaller boring head, uh, to put these two holes in as well. Um, again, just to show it, it's not it's not a difficult process uh, within a CNC program uh, to add a boring cycle in there. Um, yeah, it's I, some of my subscribers might know I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of boring, um, and it, a lot of people associate it with manual machines and sort of a bit more of an old-fashioned way of doing things and you know why would you need it um, when you've got a CNC machine um, well I, I just go back to what I was taught many many years ago by uh, a guy who taught me a, a lot about machining and he's, he was an old tool room guy and he said it doesn't matter what machine you run uh, I mean back then CNC wasn't around but it it, it applies uh, in the same way um, he said yeah whatever machine you run um, if you have a choice between um, uh, drilling and reaming a hole or boring it, he said, in general, a bored hole will always have better positional accuracy, better dimensional accuracy, better circularity, better perpendicularity, and uh, better surface finish. Uh, there's some exceptions to that. So that's always stuck with me. And uh, if I want to do the best job I can uh, on a part, I'll, uh, I'll break the boring head out. Um, to, to get a nice finish on there and, and an accurate uh, dimension. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, the interesting uh, bit of this part is going to be the 3D surfacing. And to be honest, um, it doesn't really matter what this uh, surface down here looks like uh, because it's just clearance for um, uh, tooling. Um, I want this bit to be accurate, and, uh, accurately aligned with the boss on the back, um, just for my, uh, just because I want it that way. Um, obviously a dovetail fixture, it's not critical whether the stock is on perfect on center or not. Um, you know, it's, it, there's, the part is inside the stock at some point. Um, so what I thought I'd do is, because I'm not particularly experienced at uh, 3D surfacing, I'd use this as an opportunity to try out some different stuff. Um, <clears throat> so the first tool path I came up with was uh, this one, uh, which is basically a, a it's a dynamically generated core roughing operation uh, using a 38 millimeter shell mill. So you can just see it just rips all the stock off and brings it down to this this level here. Um, next tool path um, is a finishing tool path for this bottom surface here. Uh, third tool path is a. If you look down here, you can see. It basically jumps around at the top slightly uh, on all four of these faces, and then it transitions into a, a, a spiral uh, toolpath. You can see where it sort of stops here and, and comes back out. That's quite a, a quick toolpath to um, to rip the stock off, and that should bring me down to within fifteen thousandths uh, on walls and uh, the floor there as well. And uh, I'll put the final toolpath on. This one, yeah, this is the main finishing tool uh, tool path, and this is uh, something I'll be meaning to try out. It's called a blend tool path, and um, what I did was uh, if we switch to, to this mode, you can see this vector here, this dotted line, and then this square vector uh, around the top. What you can do is you can project them upwards, uh, which is what these two vectors here are and use these to generate uh, the, the toolpath as it descends down. And if I zoom in, you can see that the toolpath begins as this sort of square where, with the broken uh, corners, 
and as it descends down through the part it slowly transitions to a circle uh, and I've heard that these produce some fairly good results I've never tried it um, obviously this is where the tool path hops down down the side so yeah I don't know how it's going to turn out but I thought I'd give it a go and see uh, what a, a blend tool path would produce so uh, yeah that's about it really um, yeah uh, I don't think there's much more to say on that I'll put recipes for speed and feeds uh, over the top of the video footage um, after I machine this okay